Welcome to another episode of At the Table with Patrick Lencioni, where everything we talk about is related to changing the world of work so that more organizations can be more effective and less dysfunctional and employees can be more fulfilled and less miserable. I'm your host, Pat Lencioni, and I'm joined as always by Cody Thompson, my co-host. How you doing, Cody? Still here. Love it. We also have Tracy Noble, our producer, on the mic. Hello, gentlemen. And Matthew, not on the mic, our trusty engineer. How you doing, Matt? He's good. That's good. Cody, what are we talking about today? Okay. The title is What is Your Genius? But I've got a big smile on my face because this is the podcast that we've been wanting to do for almost three and a half months now. We've been chomping at the bit. This is about the new model that we've been working on and just launched last week. And so now we actually get a chance to dive in in podcast format and do this, the working genius model. So the title is Discover Your or What's Your Genius? But tell us, let's just dive in. What is What have we been doing? You know what's really exciting here is the four of us sitting in this room are the four people that have been working on this for the last three and a half months, yep. Yep. which is really cool to be sitting here. And we are so excited about this. I really don't think I've ever been excited about anything I've worked on more than this in my life. And I remember the, the day we came up with this, I was sitting in a room with Tracy and Amy, and we'll do that. We'll tell that story another time. But when we shared it with Cody afterward, he said, I think this is bigger than the five dysfunctions of a team. Mm -hmm. I know. And I'll say this, like you just said, this might be the most excited I've been to work on something. I've said that it sounds like hyperbole and it's not hyperbole at all. Like I really (laughs) think that the impact that this model and this tool and this self-assessment can have on people's individual, like who they are as a person on their teams, on their organizations has the potential to be even bigger than the five dysfunctions. That's crazy to say. But to, to go, if we could go back in time to the day that you made the five dysfunctions and know the impact it would have had, we would have treated it mm-hmm. like with this level of care and yeah, concern. Who would have you known? Know? Right. So we feel like it's a gift that we just are stewarding and want to get out to people and help them. Hey, Absolutely. Cody, I love your excitement right now. I wish our listeners could see you because you look, you look excited. I know. It's almost, <laughs> we, we normally don't record in the afternoons, but it's 4, 4.30 and I'm stoked. So yeah. let's do it. You yeah, can't wipe the awesome. smile off Cody's <laughs> yeah, face, exactly. which I love. <laughs> and which is one of the great things about this tool too. It, we can explain that. Yep. You know, I think about when I started this business and I think about when I, when we, Tracy, and when I was mm-hmm. a little kid and my dad, God rest his soul, and how frustrated he was at work. And this tool gets really right at a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of reasons that you can be frustrated in your work. And one of them is if you don't know who you are and what you were made to do. And this is what this is all about. When you read the podcast intro every time, it's about making work more fulfilling. Right. And so nothing that we've done, I think, could have the immediate relief of in that specific you know, idea of like making your work more fulfilling. This accomplishes that better than anything. I we've thought of that about. as I was doing the intro, like this is at the heart of that. So let's talk about the six types of working genius here. There's, it's really two different things. First of all, these six different things are like activities or skills. The six of them make up the process of getting anything done, right? Whether it's a project at work or launching a product or running a company or running a department within that company or planning a family vacation or organizing a curriculum at, at school or, a, or an event at church. I mean, any activity, any kind of work, this is working genius. And there's six different ones. And as it turns out, of those six, everybody has two yeah. that we would call working genius. And that means they get energy from them. They're joyful when they do them, and they're naturally good at it as a result. So if you could spend most of your working time in your two areas of working genius, you are probably going to love what you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say this up front, too, that we don't sit around and think of models, right? This is no. No, You don't start <laughs> with, oh, hey, let's discover or, or invent a model that would make work more fulfilling. We work backwards from the problems that we're facing with our clients or in our lives, and this feels like it's so powerful because it's true. It feels Mm -hmm. like we, you in particular, and we'll talk about why your genius was particularly helpful in determining this, but that it feels like we just lifted the veil off of something that was true, that was frustrating for us and for other people. Yeah. So I'll just go into a little bit of, of that. And Tracy, you were part of this. One day I was in this very room where we do the podcast and something, I was on a Zoom call talking to like 70 priests and, and their staff members doing like a Zoom call for how to lead a church. And then afterward, I did a Zoom call with the staff 
that was organizing that. And I was giving them feedback and kind of pushing them around some stuff. And after that, as soon as it closed down, I turned to Amy, who was sitting next to me, and I said, Amy, I have an idea about our podcast. We should try this new thing. And Amy looked at me and said, what? why are you the way you are? Right. <laughs> why do you act this way? And I said, I don't know, but part of it I love, part of it frustrates me. And I've been kind of frustrated in my work for the last 20 years because of something I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And that started a conversation that led across the street over to our office. And me and you and Amy and Kim sat there for about three or four hours yep. with a whiteboard. And somehow this kind of popped out of my head. And so it was really me trying to solve a problem. It's like, why do I get frustrated even though I love my work? Mm -hmm. And I realized because I wasn't working in my genius and I was too often doing things outside of it and it was draining me of my energy and joy. Yep. And so it seems like that was years ago, Tracy. I know. And that was three and a half months ago, which is incredible. I cannot believe it was three and a half months ago. I can't either. I have a three-month-old baby that can barely sleep. And so the (laughs) fact that we have a functioning model and an assessment is just wild. But Pat, like you said, it was 20 years in the making. Yes. You have been thinking about this for the last 20 years. You just didn't know it. Exactly. And the anticipation is killing me, and I'm sure it's killing the listeners. So we should probably (laughs) jump right in. And What are these six? What are these six things? Okay. So here they are. The six different types of working genius. The first one is the gift or the genius of wonder. Wonder with a W, it sounds like. And, and the gift of wonder is all about the ability to ponder and to consider things and to be thinking and, and contemplative about what's going on in the environment, in the company, in the world, in your family, wherever else it is. People with the gift of wonder, and they probably don't think they have a gift at all, mm-hmm. they can sit and think about things and, and they identify like missing potential or greater opportunity or a problem that's not being solved because they can sit in that ambiguity and just wonder about it and mm-hmm. ponder what's going on. And it's an actual gift. And so often the people with this one get overlooked. Right. Mm-hmm. I've heard you say it this way that these people are obsessed with unrealized potential right. in people or projects. You know, like right. they literally will sit around and go, I just don't know. Are, are we doing the right thing? Or, is this the best that we can do? I think there's more there. You know, they say those types of things, and it's that angst around, are we realizing our full potential? Right. And they don't necessarily know what to do with it, Right. if that's the extent of the genius, but it's a, such a huge thing. This whole model came about because Amy turned to me that day and said, why are you the way you are? People that say why and why not mm-hmm. have the mm-hmm. genius of wonder. And we just had a consultant named Zach write to us and say, I have the genius of wonder. I've never realized it. I've often gotten criticized for asking why and why not. And people would say, well, why aren't you on board? Right. And he said, no, because see, I need to understand. I think there's more going on here. That's so cool. And, and he but, said, like, my whole career, people had just said, like, get in line. You know, basically, like, you, you, you know, and finally with this assessment and him recognizing as a genius, he gets to embrace that. Right. Yes. And he, he knows why he's a consultant now, too. Yep. Yes. So... The genius of wonder is, is if, if this is linear, and it kind of is, the genius of wonder comes first, but then comes the genius of invention. Mm-hmm. The genius of invention is that person who says, that's a worthwhile problem that you wonder or came up with. Please let me try to solve it. Let me come up with something new. Let me come up with a creative novel solution that's going to solve that problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the genius of invention just love, and this is one of mine, mm-hmm. I just love to come up with new ideas. And I prefer a blank slate. I love the idea of inventing or innovating from scratch. Right. And actually, when I'm telling this or doing this model with people in the last three months to try to like get the word out there, I always use you as the example, like, some, like saying someone says, why do meetings suck? And you're like, oh, let me try to figure that right. out. And you invent a whole new model around <laughs> meetings. And it's great. It, it directly solves the problem that we were trying to identify. Like these, right. these meetings are not good. They're, the potential is not there. And then the inventor comes along and says, I'd love to solve that. They have empathy right. for the question. And they're like, I want to try my, that's worthy of my energy and effort to try to solve. And the, you know, you have a genius when you want to use it, even if it's not called for. Right. <laughs> because <laughs> while I'm an inventor, I love the genius of invention. Sometimes invention is not what's needed. Yep. And yet people will come to me and I'll start inventing. And, and now that we know this, we'll go, we don't want your eye. Yep. We don't want you to be inventing right now. We're beyond that stage. But they know that that's just my natural genius, and I, I, I gravitate toward that. That's right. It's so fun for me to have this language now because I've witnessed your genius of invention over the last 23 years, and I never had the language for it. I never understood. I just thought, 
what is Pat doing? How does he keep coming up with all of this? And this is your genius. Right. Mm -hmm. This is where you shine. And we call it a gift. These are God-given talents. It's not like I take care. I like, I was like this since I grew up. And to be able to use it is a blessing, but it's not like I'm like, I'm so special. This is just the thing I have because there's two on this list that I'm terrible at. Right. Well, and it is worth mentioning that you say this often where this is the one, the genius of invention is the one that's most commonly recognized as mm-hmm. a, like a genius. I'm using right. air quotes here because people are like, oh, he's a genius or she's a genius. She came up with this. And the, one of the things that we're doing with this whole model is that you have to recognize that all six of these are required. And you need and them all. some yeah. people can't do some of them. Exactly. And so it kind of levels the playing field and, and elevates people who have different geniuses that are like, Man, without you, with these other geniuses, we wouldn't, all these inventions would just stay inventions or they might not be good. Well, mm-hmm. and without the gift of wonder, you might not have solved a problem anyway. But the genius of invention doesn't mean that you have the, the next genius, which is necessary because not all inventions are good. Mm-hmm. And the next genius I love to talk about is the genius of discernment. Mm-hmm. The genius of discernment. And that is people with this genius have great gut instincts and great intuition. They know how to, how to evaluate and assess something, whether it's going to be a good idea or not. And it's not through data and linear thinking. They see patterns mm-hmm. and they, they just have this amazing intuition. So the, the, the inventor throws something out there and the person with the genius of discernment can say, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's an, inc-. like you said, Cody, you got this better than any of us. Mm-hmm. Or they can say, whoa, 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 I don't think this is going to work. Right. Or here's three areas that I don't, that don't make sense to me. And we just, people with the genius of discernment, we just trust their opinions and their judgment. Mm -hmm. They're really good curators of what's going on around them. And they know how to take all that information and come to really good solutions and advice and counsel. Yeah. And I love when you say that, like, this is sort of like an integrated, intuitive thinking process, because I think some people hear this and think industry expertise. Like, oh, yeah, I no, have an expertise that. in this area. Let's go talk to this person who knows a lot about XYZ. That's not it. In fact, discerners are people that can do this across a broad range of topics. They, they, they seem to have this like natural ability to evaluate things even that they don't know. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. So so it is that is the the relationship between the inventor and discerner. So Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it, it's an iterative process. The, invent, the person with the genius of invention throws an idea out there and the discerner comes along and says, ooh, what about this? That's a great idea. How about this? And they go back and forth. And finally, the discerner says, I think it's there. Mm-hmm. I think we've got something. And that's huge. So we've had wonder, invention, discernment. And then the next one that comes along, though, is this. If this is worth doing, then the galvanizer, the genius of galvanizing, has to come along and say, Let's get people excited. Let's recruit people. Let's inspire people. Let's gather people together and get this moving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get this organized to take action. See, the gal, and you have the genius of galvanizing, Cody. And see, you and I are both ENFPs in the Myers Briggs. Yeah. And for years, you felt bad because yeah, this, we were different. This gave me some immediate relief when you put, the, when you put these things together because you mentioned this up front, but each of us have two working genius of the six. And I used, we're both ENFPs and I would go home literally when Tracy said, Hey, I've seen you do this invention thing for a long time. We didn't have the language. You would get a whiteboard marker and go up and solve the problem or invent the solution. And I would try to do a miniature version of like a junior Pat impression when you're gone. And it never seemed to work. And it like, so I would go home and I'd be like, man, we're both ENFPs. What's wrong with me? Do I listen to too many podcasts? Do I watch too much TV? Why is Pat able to do this? And I'm not. And then when I realized that you have invention and discernment. That's your two geniuses. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mine is discernment and galvanizing. I got to go, oh, I'm not an inventor. And that was actually so freeing for me to be able to go, I get to live in my genius. And guess what? The very thing that frustrated you was that you had to invent something and galvanize well, it. Well, that's the thing. I yep. was constantly galvanizing, which is not my area of genius. And it was exhausting me. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know why. That's what started this whole thing. It's that every time we'd come up with a new idea, people would go, okay, Pat, get us, get us moving around this. And when we finally came up with this model, I said, hey, who else in the company has, has got the genius of galvanizing? Cody does. He's got to be the person to mm-hmm. get us rallied. And it's, it's freed me up to live in my genius. It taps into yours. Absolutely. I mean, that's why I have this level of energy talking about this. I literally have had back-to-back-to-back Zoom calls talking about this model. And by the fifth one, I'm more excited than I am by the first one because. 
I'm going out there and telling the world, you know, yeah. like this is what I love to do around stuff that I find good. I'm a discerner. Like this is the solution. A galvanizer goes, I got to tell the whole world. Yeah. Now the next one after you galvanize yes. is the genius of enablement. And that's a good word. People think enablement, you don't want to enable people who have a drinking problem or a drug addiction. No, enablement is a good thing. It means people that make things possible, that enable things to happen. And when the galvanizer galvanizes and, and inspires people and recruits people, the person with the genius of enablement, the E, as we say, they know how to say, I know what you need. I can help you with that. I will come alongside and make this work mm -hmm. on your terms. Mm -hmm. And two of the people in this room, Tracy and Matt, yeah. This is one of their geniuses. Yes. And it's extraordinary because you know exactly how to help and when to help, and you can flex to what's needed to happen. A lot of people with this genius think, oh, I'm just nice. Exactly. Right? Or I'm a pushover. I'll do anything people ask. No, this is an actual genius, and it's something that we need to recognize. And when you finally get those people to realize what a gift it is, you do that usually by helping them realize how many people don't have that gift. Right. Mm -hmm. I know. And I'm tempted right now to jump into these examples because it helps explain, but I think we should go all the way through. And then it's what, what you do is you look at a team and you say, Hey, if, if we don't have people with this level of genius, here's what we can expect in terms of like where projects fall off and yeah. enablers, they get the ball rolling. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they love being at responding to the galvanizer and saying, I'm here to help. Was it hard mm -hmm. for you to admit that you had this one, Tracy? You recognize this now, right? Yeah, I think so. I think I struggled with this one for a while just because I didn't see it as a genius. Right. I thought I was just a pushover and just, and, <laughs> and I, I didn't understand it as a genius, but I think you've given me the language now. Where yeah, I'm like, you, oh, okay, I get it now. And the people in our company that are, have the genius of enablement, they make things happen. They get sure. the, the thing oh, yeah. off the ground. The people we, we've worked with organizations have no one with the genius of enablement. I and know, they said, that's we crazy. have the hardest time getting people going. Yeah. Because yeah. nobody wants to help. They all want to invent or they all want to discern or they all want to galvanize. That's like, right. Well, who's going to actually respond? Totally. Yeah. And what I love, and this is part of the application and the, you know, we're, we'll get into that. But part of what makes this so amazing is I look at you, Tracy, with someone who has enablement and the enablement falls in my bottom two, which mm -hmm. are like so me painfully too. hard for me to do. <laughs> and I am like, can celebrate that in you. Absolutely. Because I'm like, to me, that, that is, you know, seems impossible and so distasteful. And you are just like, to be able to look at someone and celebrate it because I don't have it is amazing. Yeah, it That's is. It. And I feel it's a similar experience around galvanizing because that is in my bottom too. That's, mm -hmm. I think, my, my bottom. And I look at when you galvanize, I, I think it's magic. It's right, like right. magic <laughs> I work. I feel the same about <laughs> And that's the wonderful yeah. thing in here. It helps us celebrate one another's gifts. That's and, right. And move them into roles where they can be the very best that they can be. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The last of the six geniuses is called the genius of tenacity. The, the, the person who has the genius of tenacity loves to finish things. They like mm -hmm. to drive things across the finish line, make sure that the, the results and the impact has been achieved mm -hmm. and they're not responding to the emotional appeal of the galvanizer. They're responding to the need to see it finished and completed. That's right. Mm -hmm. And this is very, very low on mine. And I really appreciate it when people have that because it means that even after some of the, the luster is worn off or the, the, the exciting new part of something that they're going to keep us moving. They're going to mm -hmm. stay yep. on top of us and make sure we finish. Yep. Yeah, you know, they're not they're not satisfied with the, getting the ball to the two yard line. I mean, they they want to punch it through to the end zone, and they get actual real satisfaction, joy, and energy from finishing things. Yeah, which is amazing. I mean, I know people like this in my life or on teams that we. I mean, mm -hmm. Tracy has this too, and or, or up in her top yes. couple. But it's amazing. My wife has this, and she will marvel at like she gets real satisfaction from finishing a project or checking a box on something or saying like we finally saw the impact of this whole process in the world. You right. Know? Yeah. Not, and neither my wife nor I have this. In fact, it's in our very, very bottom, which is why our garage is usually a mess and our power got cut off once because we both forgot to pay the bills. Right. So that, but, and, but now we know that. We used to go, why aren't you doing that? It's like, we both stink at tea. And, we, That's and, right. we, and it's, we call it working frustration because, well, you know what? That's actually what we should do next is yes. you should do the two, two, and two. Yeah. So, so, Two of these six things, wonder, invention, discernment, galvanizing, enablement, and tenacity, two of those six are what we call working geniuses. And that means you can, it's like take a cup of, and, and pour coffee into it. 
and then put a lid on the top. And if it's one of these, you know, these tumblers, tumblers or, yeah, or whatever, yeah. these kids are c- carrying around with them all the time. <laughs> Matt has one with him at all times. If you put the lid on it, it can hold that, that coffee, the heat for, for a long, long yep. time. So th- th- this is where you pour energy into something. And if it's your working genius, you can maintain your joy and your energy for a long, long, long time. Mm-hmm. And you're naturally good at that. There's another one, which is like pour coffee into a cup, but don't put a lid on it. And it's going to hold the heat for a while, but it's eventually going to dissipate, you know? And if you leave it outside, it's probably going to evaporate over time. But, you know, you can do it. We call these working competencies. And two mm-hmm. of them fall into that category. Two working yeah. competencies. And, and you can do them. You wouldn't want to do them all the time, but if you had to do them for quite a while, you could probably make it work. Mm-hmm. So these are in the middle areas. The last two are working frustrations, we call them. And this is the cup of coffee. You pour the coffee in and there's a hole in the bottom of the cup and it just (laughs) drains right through. It doesn't hold any liquid. And so all the joy, all the the energy is gone. Mm -hmm. And if you have a job where you have to work in your areas of frustration, you are miserable. And you know what's crazy is right after we threw this up on the board, for the first few times, I'm still a little jealous. I wasn't at the first four hour meeting. I was, I was <laughs> You're having the, a baby, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> but the job I had before this one at a startup in San Francisco, this is a job that I, I would literally go home and I'm like, everyone in the world wants this job. I was the fourth employee at the startup that was growing super quickly and I was miserable. And I was like, why is this the case? And now that we have this language, I look back and I'm like, it required me to do the exact two things that are in my bottom category. It could be mm. the, it could be the sexiest looking job in the world. But if you're required to work outside of your working genius, and, and especially in your working frustrations, it's not right it's for awful. you. It's going to be miserable. My first job as a management consultant was supposed to be the greatest job for college grads. But all they wanted me to do is enablement, which is- Do whatever the boss do, says. Do yeah. what we say and come alongside us when we need you. And tenacity, which is, and just finish everything. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize at the time, it's like, I thought management consulting means I was going to be giving advice to managers. Right. As it does, I was going to be doing spreadsheets and printing things really late at night before a deadline. (laughs) And so it makes sense that I wasn't, but I was like, why am I failing? And it's like, because God gave you strengths and you're not using any of them here. Mm -hmm. That's right. And what a relief when people figure this out. I just, I have to pause here and say, we forgot to tell people, we have a really cool assessment around this particular model. Oh my gosh, can you believe we haven't told anybody that? (laughs) We have not told anyone about it yet. And anybody on this podcast can go take it right now at workinggenius.com. That's two Gs, workinggenius.com. And and go fill all the stuff out. And at the end, there's a code after you purchase it. And if you type in in capital letters, one word, at the table, you'll get a 50% discount, which takes a $25 product to a $12.50 product. And it can literally change the way you look at your job, your career, your team, and why you're happy or unhappy at work or why you succeed or you don't succeed That's for right. $12.50. $12. I know. I, I would love for everyone on this podcast. I mean, they've, they've been around. They've, ta- they, they've been here when we talk about the arguments that we've had. And, mm-hmm. and oh, like the people the, on the, the, yeah, our the listeners. people that yeah, listen yeah, yeah. to this. Like, <laughs> it feels like we know them and they know us. And for, for them to be able to speak some of the same language around like, man, I'm a... I'm a wonder tenacious person or I'm an enabler galvanizer, you know? So that would be wonderful. So that was the first thing, workinggenius.com. The second thing, October 30th. Yes. Now this is, we've said this on the podcast before. We want to remind you October 30th, we are going to have, which, which by when this comes out, that'll be a couple days. We're going to have our our big speech around this a live streamed kickoff speech. And I'm going to be talking about this and we hope, to, we hope to have tens of thousands of people on that call. Yeah, October 30th. So if you're listening to this the day it comes out, it's this week. It's two days away. You need to go sign and up. 10 a.m. Pacific yeah. time. And that means on tablegroup.com or even at the banner Working Genius, actually just go straight to Working Genius. At the very top, it'll say sign up to watch the live event. Yeah. And that'll happen 10 a.m. October 30th. You know, a lot of people said, why didn't you charge more for this? Because like if we made this an enterprise player, we wanted to maximize our revenue. We might have charged more. But we said we want every if there's a parent out there that has a kid graduating from high school or college or, you know, somebody who's frustrated in their work. This is a chance to give them insight and they Mm -hmm. will. We've had so many people have their minds blown by looking at their report and saying, oh my gosh, I never had language for this before. Now I realize what was wrong. Totally. I was just talking to a team this week where the, the team leader is not a galvanizer and there's no one else really on the team that has any level of galvanizing. They keep thinking, man, if we, if we invent the right thing and we execute on it, people will come. Yeah. And no mm-hmm. one's coming. 
And, and so <laughs> it, it, the amount of relief it gave to them to go like, oh, okay, you guys are missing this key piece of the puzzle. When, when you think about that, and this is why I say it has the, the potential impact to exceed the five dysfunctions is this is true in your marriage. It's true personally. It can like, even just knowing this about yourself, the, the thing that makes this different from any other personality assessment is it's great to know I'm an ENFP and I get to read about We myself, love the Myers-Briggs, you know? DISC, all those yeah. different things. But at the end of the day, it doesn't tell me exactly where I slide into getting something done. Right. You know? and, and that's what people say is, well, should I hire an, a D or an S or an I or should I hire an ENTJ or whatever else? And we're always like, well, it's hard to know. But this says these six things, make sure a person wants to do those tasks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if they do, they're going to be so happy. And if they don't, no matter how talented you think they are, you're going to drive them into the ground. Yeah. And I will say this, because like, I, I, I keep having these conversations and even one, one person I was talking to was like, no, I think I believe in this as much as you do. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think so. Let me, <laughs> let me keep going. And wh- what I see actually is like that I think that there's a real probability or possibility in the world where like when people apply for jobs, there should be like a two letter code on the job. We're looking says, for an ET. Yeah. We're looking for a, or a wonder galvanizer, you know, that helps them Mm-hmm. Because it's not about experience. You know, it's like, oh, I worked at Visa before this. That doesn't really help you understand this. But this model itself is a testament to the fact that we did all that we did in three and a half months to get it out in the world. Because we really we couldn't have done it's so if we true. didn't play into each other's geniuses. You know, I think we hired Matthew and Liam earlier in the summer, right? Mm-hmm. And we came up with this model like weeks before they started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we said, hey, you guys take this so we figure out how to staff you. Mm-hmm. So we looked at Matthew, who is a discerner and, and enablement genius, and we said, he should work on this project here mm-hmm. yep. because it's going to require a lot of discernment and thinking about this. What are the right questions? How do we test it? And he's going to have to help Tracy and us and do this. And he's been wildly successful. Liam, on the other hand, is a galvanizer tenacity genius. And he we put on a different project that needed somebody to kick butt and get things done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's been wildly successful. Had we swapped them, their success level and enjoyment of their jobs would have been completely, completely different. Not yep. to mention we wouldn't have been able to do what the we work. did. You know, because right. you take someone, at, you know, if, if we talk about culture being getting the right people on the bus, this is the most practical way to make sure that the people on the bus are in the right seat. In the right mm-hmm. seat. As Jim Collins says, yeah, you got to yeah. get them in the right seats. The other thing is Liam who's 22 years old, has the gift of galvanizing. Mm -hmm. He was on a team with people 20 years older than him. And we said, you need to galvanize them. And the other people said, yeah. And he goes, but I I don't even know your business that well. It doesn't matter. You like to rally people. When we have a goal, we need you to get people going to to crack the whip. And the other people said, yeah, please do that because we're not galvanizing. And he's loving that. Mm -hmm. And he said, I, it had taken me 10 years at another company before I could do this. Totally. But we said, it's a, it's a gift. It's a skill. You don't earn it by being in your chair for 10 years. Right. Yep. You know, I want to talk about one other thing that has to do with right after the tool came out, literally the night we came up with, I wrote it on the whiteboard in the other office. I went home because we had just come back from the COVID shutdown and we were working in the office again. And I had a, a Zoom call at night and I wrote it on the whiteboard for this consultant, a friend of ours. I mean, you, you, people know Chris, he's on our podcast. Yep. And I said, hey, Chris, look at this new model we came up with. And he was like, wow, that's interesting. But we, I mean, literally it had been around for six hours. Yeah. The next morning he had a call with the CEO of a company and he was consulting to them. And the CEO was like, I'm so frustrated with the process of how we get things done. And it's driving me crazy. And Chris was like, wait a second. Cause he knows how to spot these things. And he draws the new model on the board and the CEO is staring at it, tears in his eyes. He says, this is my problem. Mm. This is the problem. This works. And they've reorganized as a result of that. Right. Well, I love this. I was going to read this email. I mean, there's so many stories like that, that the aha moment is so, it's so simple and so practical and so immediate that somebody took the assessment and we got this email today. It says, guys, wow, very intuitive, so helpful. I'm, I'm wonder and discernment. My business partner is invention and tenacity. It's helped explain a frustration that I slash we have felt for years and it flipped that we used to flip too quickly from idea to implement. My business partner feels like I slow things down a bit at times, helps explain that too. So it, almost immediately. The insights come within 10 minutes. Right. My wife and I in our marriage, we're like, here's why we argue. Here's why we do so well together. We better outsource this thing because yeah. neither of us want to do it. Yep. You had said this, Pat, when we talk about it's important for two reasons. We, we, we could go for two hours on, on this and we're, I think we're going to break it up. We're going to do multiple yes. around the six geniuses, but. Yeah. 
let's end with this. Like the, the, this is important for two reasons. Tell us what that means. Well, first of all, it reduces unnecessary guilt. Too many people walk around in life think, I feel bad that I'm not good at that. I remember Chris said, gosh, I've never been a T and I've always felt like, am I lazy or am I, and I feel the same way. And it's like, no, you, that's not your gift. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean sometimes we don't have to do stuff like that, but why make yourself feel guilty for, for not being good at something that's not your natural God-given talent? The other thing is we judge each other. Mm-hmm. We'll see somebody at work and we go, hey, they're not finishing that. They must not care. They're lazy. Or they don't know how to come up with a new yeah. idea. They're just dumb. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and, and we don't do that overtly, but inside we start to judge people when, once we understand there are geniuses, we're like, I can celebrate who Tracy is. She can celebrate who I am, and yep. we can help each other fill in the gaps that, that we have. It really does go a long way to reducing unnecessary tension at work. Yeah. What we're going to do in our next podcast, most likely, uh, you know, the, all of this is subject to change, is talk about teams, <laughs> yeah. teamwork, yes. how teamwork changes as a result of people understanding one another's geniuses and, and stories about about how that's worked here and at other companies. But we would love to hear from you. If you when you take this, we really want you to take it at workinggenius.com. Put in the code, capital letters, one word at the table. We would love to hear about your insights. Yeah. And Pat, I'll let you wrap up before you go. I want to say one thing and that is we almost never sell anything on this podcast. No, like, no, no, like, I know. We don't feel good about it. We're just like Except those we, cookies un- that woman those cookies, made. Right. That was awesome. But I feel so strongly about like I just want everybody on this podcast to go type in that code, take the assessment. I like this is the one thing that I'm like, you know, in the 70 podcasts mm-hmm. we've done where I'm like this will help you. So and if it doesn't, I, you email us and we'll send you a notebook. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 the thing is 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 there are so many things out there like if you're listening to this and you're like me, you hear something on a podcast, you're like, that's great. I might check that out later. Let this be the one that you write down, go home, get on your computer and actually do. And have your spouse do it. Have, you, have a, a ch- one of your older children do it. It can really make a difference. And yep. we're so excited about that. Yep. Yes, I love it. Tracy, thanks for being on. Thank you for having we me. We have our introverted friends on and, and it's hard for them to get a word in sometimes. We feel bad <laughs> These two Yeah, ENFPs. we're aware of that, by the yes, way. Yeah, if you send us an email and they're like, hey, you should let the other people talk. We're like, I know, we screwed that up again. <laughs> but thank you, Tracy. Yes, thank you. For all you did around this. Matt, you too. Seriously. And... Cody, it's been fun. It always is. We love talking to you. We love doing these podcasts. We wish we could be with all of you. Until the next time, God bless.